Okay, let's define exponential functions. And then we're gonna look at some examples and identify whether they represent exponential functions or not. So in defining exponential functions, we're gonna use a and b as just being constants. It's good. So it goes a times b raised to the x power, that variable's up in the exponent, that's key to being an exponential function. It's only attached to b, whatever number that is. A is out here in front, it's, there's no parentheses around here, so the x is only attached to the b. All right, we say a can't be zero, okay? Because if a was zero, zero times anything is zero. Um, you lose the b raised to the x power. This is also referred to as being the initial value. Um, as you can see at the bottom here, you can say that's the y-intercept if you wanted to. And if you wanted to know exactly why, well, if you plug in zero, we go a times b to the zero power. Anything to the zero power is equal to one, so that's like a times one. A times one is just gonna be A, okay? B is gonna be some positive real number, okay? So it can be a negative number for the base here, whatever has the exponent attached to it. And we also say that our base can be equal to one. So positive, but not equal to one. Now the domain on these is gonna be all real numbers. The range is gonna be affected. Um, it's gonna be from A to, if A is greater than zero, if it's facing upwards, it's gonna be from zero to infinity, uh, positive numbers. If this had been reflected by that number out in front being a negative, what's gonna happen is it gets flipped upside down. It's gonna be negative real numbers for our range. So rapid fire here, let's just go through and say, is it an exponential, yes or no? So we wanna be careful of the base has to be positive, not equal to one. Variable has to be up in the exponent are kind of the keys to this. So on this first one, we'd answer yes. It may not be in that standard form, a times b to the x power, but it does fulfill our criteria. On this next one, j of x, negative two raised to the x power, we'd have to answer no on this one because our base, this would be where b is, has to be positive, can equal one. This is a negative for our base, so that's not okay. Next up, 1.75 times x plus two, we'd have to answer no on this one. The reason being our variable, the x, is not up in the exponent. Instead, we could refer to this as being a linear function, but it's not exponential. <clears throat> J of x here, we do have a base, it's positive base, our variable's up in the exponent. I know we have a negative up here in the exponent, but that's okay, that's still gonna represent an exponential function. All right, f of x, we have two x squared minus three x plus one. As you can see here, our variable's not in the exponent, so we'd have to answer no, it's not an exponential function. Instead, we could classify this as being a quadratic polynomial. A uh, polynomial with x raised to the second power is its highest power. x cubed, this kind of looks like a, uh, an exponential function, but it's kind of in the reverse order, where x is our base here and the three is the exponent. These would have to be switched in order for this to be an exponential. So not an exponential, this is a cubic function h of x, one third raised to the x power. Now we have a base here and it's a fraction, but it's positive. That's the important thing here. Variables up in the exponent. So that's gonna be yes, it's an exponential function. And one last one, we have a decimal raised to the x power. That decimal is positive. That's the important thing. Variables up in the exponent. So yes, this also gets classified as an exponential function. Hope this helps out. Um, we'll be plugging into functions next.